the influenza epidemic of 1918. From the spring of 1918 till the following spring of 1919, the U.S. encountered a new and gruesome disease called influenza. It was the largest epidemic since the bubonic plague of the 1400s. Influenza was passed from the U.S. to Europe and back again. This epidemic led to the exploration of the first vaccine for this virus and would forever change the world for the better. Life before the pandemic was what one would call chaotic. On April 2, 1917, the president asked Congress for a declaration of war on Germany. On April 6, the U.S. declared war on Germany, officially entering World War I. During this war, U.S. soldiers were brought to Europe. Influenza was sometimes known as the Spanish flu because Spain is where the flu was first recognized. During this war, soldiers from many countries contracted the influenza virus, and when American soldiers brought the disease home with them, the influenza epidemic began. Before the war and epidemic, life was pretty good. Entertainment such as theaters, roller skating, and saloons were very popular around that time, and Americans had more free time than in past generations. Although life seemed to be good for many Americans, the life expectancy was only 53 to 54 years old because of communicable diseases, sanitation problems, and low personal hygiene. Influenza was not only an epidemic, but a pandemic, which is an epidemic affecting multiple parts of the world simultaneously. Influenza is a respiratory infection that usually comes without any warning. It is a virus, so it cannot be cured, and it is always mutating. Scientists believe that this pandemic was caused by a dramatic shift in the type A virus of influenza. It not only affected humans, but animals as well, even though it was very rare for a human to catch the flu from an animal. The symptoms of influenza are aches, fevers, and a sore throat. Influenza sometimes caused people to have high fevers and be delusional. During this epidemic, life was very hard. One-fifth of the world's population encountered influenza. When American soldiers went to Europe for World War I, they brought the flu with them. Approximately 20 to 40 million people died worldwide. After about a year, 2 billion people worldwide were affected by this deadly flu. About 25% of the United States was affected by this pandemic, and 650,000 died, accounting for 2% of the world's population. More people died in the U.S. from influenza than the amount of soldiers that died in World War I, World War II, the Korean War, and the Vietnam War altogether. During this time, the life expectancy decreased by 12 years in the U.S. It was spread very easily. Coughing, sneezing, and talking were some of the ways it spread. Edna Register Boone said that when people died, their family members would bury them in the clothes they died in, wrapped in their own sheets. Public funerals were prohibited because people worried it would cause influenza to spread faster. So many people died that they ran out of coffins and spaces to bury the dead. There were not any treatments at this time, which made it a lot worse. So many people were ill that stores and many other places had to close. There were house calls and some people had to become nurses to help others. The flu came in three waves. The U.S. first encountered influenza in March 1918 and ended around August. It first hit in Camp Funston in Fort Riley, Kansas. In just five weeks, 1,127 soldiers were affected and 47 died. The first wave pretty much left the U.S. untouched, barely affecting it. The second wave, which was the worst of all three, lasted from a few weeks after the first ended to mid-November. When it hit Boston, Massachusetts in late August, over 300 men died within the first week. Lieutenant Junior Gray, J.G. Keegan, a medical officer in Boston, had the opinion that the disease would spread rapidly across the entire country, attacking between 30 and 40 percent of the population and running an acute course in for four to six weeks in each community. But mid-September, the health commissioner of Boston estimated over 3,000 people had gotten the flu and been hospitalized. When the flu hit Fort Devens in September, Dr. William Henry Welch, a U.S. surgeon, was ordered to go and help. When he arrived, 66 men died of pneumonia, which was sometimes caused by the flu. By the end of October, 17,000 soldiers had been sick and 787 died. Colonel Victor C. Vaughn, a doctor that worked with Welch, described what he saw. There are hundreds of stalwart young men in the uniform of their country coming into the wards of the hospital in groups of ten or more. They were placed on the cots until every bed is full, yet others crowd in. Their faces soon wear a bluish cast. A distressing cough brings up the blood-stained sputum. In the morning, the dead bodies are stacked about the morgue like cordwood. This picture was painted on my memory cells. The doctors decided to do autopsies of the flu victims and looked at their lungs because they expected to find damage there, since influenza was a respiratory infection. 
Instead of the lungs being lightweight like they should be, they were very dense and soaked in blood, replacing what should have been oxygen. Doctors were able to decipher this as the cause of death. The doctors have never seen anything like this and thought it might be a plague. Influenza kept spreading throughout the United States, but health officials said they were working on a cure. People started wearing gauze masks in public to try to prevent the flu from spreading. These masks did not work, though, because the flu virus was so tiny that it went through the mask. Some ways people try to prevent the flu were banning spitting, covering your mouth when you cough or sneeze, and some other home remedies. The third wave was worse than the first, but milder than the second. It finished off the year 1918 and lasted all the way through the following spring of 1919. On November 11, 1918, Germany surrendered and the Allied forces won World War I, causing everyone to celebrate. Since everyone was so excited that America had won, influenza cases went unnoticed. Even though the flu cases started to drop, the epidemic was not over yet. The third wave was on its way. Even when President Woodrow Wilson battled the flu, people were still unaware that the flu hadn't ended. Due to President Wilson's near-death experience with influenza, which most likely led to a stroke, he resigned from public office. In Wisconsin, the flu was not reported until a month later after most of the states. But within two weeks of the first reported case, Milwaukee had almost 5,000 cases recorded and about 200 deaths. On October 2nd, Wisconsin held a meeting with the health board on what to do about this disease. They decided to quarantine people immediately. This helped prevent the spread of influenza, which is likely why Wisconsin had a lower number of cases and deaths compared to the other states. Influenza made a profound impact on the world, both negatively and positively. Millions of families had to deal with the death of their loved ones. It also caused many economic issues, such as businesses going bankrupt. Even though this pandemic was so tragic, it was barely mentioned or written about years after the flu ended, most likely because all of the painful memories. Stephanie Peters states in her book, Epidemic, the 1918 Influenza Pandemic. Finally, the flu may have been easy to forget because there were no lasting reminders of its existence, which was true. The only long-term effect that really affected everyone was the vaccine. The only good outcome of this awful disease was it led to the exploration of the first vaccine to help prevent more people from getting the flu. When scientists started to research influenza, they could not find a cause at first. They first thought it was a bacteria, not a virus. They did know that it was spread through contact with someone with influenza that was coughing or sneezing. When some people had symptoms that were not necessarily associated with the flu, Doctors and scientists tended to think they might have cholera or were suffering from the bubonic plague. In the fall of 1918, Joseph Goldberger and other researchers began to exchange their ideas and explore a vaccine for this flu. They came up with a range of vaccines, but none were contested. Finally, in 1944, the first vaccine was introduced to the U.S. with the help of Jonas Salk. Since the flu mutated so quickly, the vaccine was only good for a year or two before having to get another one. Over the years, the vaccines became better and more effective, evolving up to the vaccine we have today. The vaccine changed everything and helped everyone worldwide. The breakthrough discovery of the flu vaccine took a worldwide problem and made it easier to prevent. People still get the flu and some still die, but the count is much lower than when there was not a vaccine. Instead of 20 to 40 million dying in one year, only 200,000 are hospitalized and 30 to 40,000 die. Even though this amount of deaths might seem like a lot, it's a significantly smaller number compared to the amount from the pandemic of 1918 to 1918. Getting a flu shot each year can reduce the chance of getting the flu by 50 to 60 percent. Although the 1918 influenza epidemic accounted for the loss of many lives, it changed the world for the better in the long term. It led to the vaccine, which continues to help save millions of lives year after year.